Welcome back. So far, we've identified five fault sources of joy, typical ways that we all try to experience joy. But the key word is faults. These five sources of joy aren't really sources at all. They just appear to be. So if they're fake, why do we keep going there? Why can't we figure it out? The Bible says in Jeremiah 2.13, where God is talking to Israel, He said, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. If this, for those of you who were not raised on a ranch, like I was not, I'm a city girl, you might not even know what a cistern is. And a cistern is just an underground container that catches and holds water. So at this moment in Israel's history, the nation of Israel is in exile, far from God, because she'd worshiped other idols and rebelled against him. In this verse, God mentions two of the specific ways that Israel had disobeyed him. He tells them that they had forsaken him, the true God, and to add insult to injury, they were trying to satisfy themselves. So here's the way I see it in my mind. It's, it's like we're hopelessly lost in the desert, dying of thirst, seeking anything to quench our parched, dry throats. And we see off to the side a kiosk with big flashing neon lights, and God is holding up a sign that says, living water available here. We see the kiosk, we see the lights, we see God, we see the sign that promises relief, and we say, no thanks, Scott, appreciate the offer, but I see a shovel over there, I think I'll dig my own cistern. And off we trot to start digging our own well, our own cisterns. We abandon God, who has not just water, but a spring of water, meaning it will never dry up. And we decide we're gonna figure it out by ourselves. So we start digging. But the problem is that our cisterns always break. They never hold up. The water leaks out, and we remain thirsty, unable to quench our own thirst. Well, this is how it's played out in my life many times. See if you can relate. I'm having a bad day. Any number of things have gone wrong. Feeling a little down, a little discouraged. What God wants me to do first is to talk to Him, read His Word, remind myself of His ability to quench the ache in my soul, to meditate on His love and power, maybe even listen to some music that reinforces my faith in Him, and most of all, he wants me to remind myself that those five sources of joy that I cling to will always let me down because this is earth, not heaven. And in so doing, I'll readjust my perspective on what's going on in my life that day. That would be seeking the spring of living water. What I have done so many times instead is to feel the emptiness and the ache in my soul and decide, I'll call a friend. I'll call so-and-so because she always makes me feel better. Or I'll call my husband. He cheers me up. Maybe I do that. I call my friend, call Rick, and I find myself feeling a little bit better. They've encouraged me, shared some scripture with me. But you know what? In a very short time, I realize that the good feelings are gone, and I'm still lonely or afraid, upset. I'm still thirsty. So then I think, okay, I know what I need to do. I need to just turn on the TV for a minute, you know, kind of distract myself. And it works for a while. But the bad feelings are still there. I'm still thirsty. So then I walk through the kitchen and the refrigerator calls my name and I think to myself, that's it, I'm hungry, food will make it better. And so I consume mass quantities of chips and salsa and guacamole and last night's roast and potatoes and carrots and still empty. Chocolate, chocolate fixes everything. So after eating my approved one ounce of dark chocolate, I take stock of where I'm at. I've talked to a friend, I've distracted myself from my worries, I've eaten far too much, and I'm still sad inside. We're thirsty people, but you have to understand that digging a broken cistern will never satisfy. It was never meant to. And sometimes in our efforts to satisfy ourselves and find joy, we dig like crazy and we shovel as hard as we can and we get mad because God isn't helping us. And we say, God, why aren't you helping me? I am in desperate need here. You and I need to understand that God is never going to help you dig a broken cistern. He will never help you find joy outside of himself.